If you would please stand once again, hymn number 468. Again, checking hands on the first verse, hymn number 468. I will sing the wondrous story. seated. Let's open our Bibles tonight to the book of Acts, chapter 6. You may wonder what this has to do with our title. Uh, we'll try to tie them together as we go. Acts, chapter 6, verse 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. I think many of us are almost horrified by the scandals over the years. Uh, some of us remember a man named Bernard, uh, Bernard Madoff, Madoff who set up a Ponzi scheme and schemed millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars 
<clears throat> from thousands and thousands of people. Fortunately, I didn't lose anything because I don't have enough to give him anyway. But you know, those of us who remember, he schemed, I think I read one person invested over $50 million with him, and it was a Ponzi scheme and they lost it all. There have been cheaters who have cheated thousands of elderly men and women, not to the same scale as Mr. Madoff, but nevertheless, there are all kinds of schemes and scams and, and everything that people call. I, I had a, a gentleman yesterday was calling me and he, uh, he asked me, he said, I, I got a phone call that they're gonna send me to jail if I don't give them my credit card and pay off a bill but I don't even remember owing the bill. And I said, don't you dare give them your credit card. It's a scam. And it's like, oh, how can people fall for that? I get several calls a day, not, not every day, but I get several calls a week that your computer is, we, you know, this is Microsoft Corporation, and we have received an error message on your computer and you need to give us access to your computer so that we can get in and, and straighten out the problem. My son-in-law saved me from do, I, I almost did that one time and my son-in-law said, that's a scam, don't you dare do it. And you get all of these things that uh, I got one just Friday, your PayPal account is frozen until you give us your credit card so that we can settle up your account. There are thousands and thousands of scams out there every day where people are trying to cheat you out of your money. We've all seen pictures of rioters and thugs that go into a disaster zone, zone and loot and steal and smash and destroy and take anything they can get their hands on. We read with anger of the government waste and how the governments waste millions and millions of dollars on fraudulent claims. Things that, and I, I, I read just recently how many millions of dollars every year are paid by the government for false medical claims that people don't even exist. We read how that the government waste money on, on all kinds of things and I personally get a little angry when I see politicians who have obviously lied, cheated, embezzled our government and they can sit before a Senate committee or even a judge and lie through their teeth and it's nothing to them. But what about Christians? Do we get a pass because we're a Christian? Do we get a pass over our minor acts of dishonesty because it doesn't involve millions and millions of dollars? Is it less sin to steal a penny than it is to steal a million dollars? Is it less of a sin to tell a little white lie instead of committing perjury in a courtroom? Is it any less sin to cheat on our taxes than to file a false claim with the government? When you get right down to it, many times Christians are not much more honest than people of the world. We criticize, we scream at the TV when somebody's stealing, but when it gets right down to it, can you be trusted? And I'll, I'm going to look at some things. You know, in today's society, now, and, and I'm telling my age, we didn't have computers when I was in school. I know that comes as a shock. We did not have computers when I was in school. We could not get on the internet and Google and search and find a report on a subject that we had been assigned and copy that report. We had to write it out. We had to do the research. We had to document. I mean, we had to do it the old fashioned way. But nowadays, students, if you're really, really good, they can get on the computer 
break into the school, get a copy of the test before it's administered, have the answers, memorize the answers, and come out with a smelling like a rose because they cheated on a test. Now, when I was in school, the worst thing we had to worry about was somebody looking over at the paper next to you, but the teacher always usually caught them. But we, nowadays, children cheat on tests, or as they get older, they plagiarize someone else's work. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but in Sunday school and on Wednesday night, I've started putting footnotes in. You know why I do that on our, on our notes? Because I'm letting you know I copied this from this person. I'm not going to be accused of plagiarizing if I can avoid it. But in today's society, storekeepers learn all kinds of ways to shortchange their customers. I remember when I was in middle school and then on into high school, I, I worked at a fruit stand. And I can still remember this lady, and that's been years ago. I can still remember this lady. She came in one day, and she was collecting a bunch of tomatoes that we were selling. And, and I took them, and we went to put them on the scale to weigh them. And she got very, very upset because we were weighing the bag. And it's like I went to the owner, and I said, she is not going to let me weigh these tomatoes in the bag because she's saying that we're trying to cheat her by charging for the weight of what that paper bag is. So the owner came over and said, okay, ma'am, and said, we'll fix it. Took, the, took him out of the bag, laid him on the scale, weighed him. She, she paid him. And she said, now, where's my bag? He said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you don't get a bag. I'm sorry. And, and boy, she was mad. But a lot of times they will do things. In that case, he was a little aggravated. But in that case, it was her trying to cheat him rather than him trying to cheat her. Now, this is going to shock some of you, but there have been numerous instances, in, at least nationwide, where stores take meat that is expired, mix it with fresh meat, add a little coloring to it, and put a whole new expiration date on it. That's been verified in, in several different places. They take old meat that's expired, mix it with good meat, put some coloring in it, mix it up, and sell it as fresh meat. What are they doing? They're stealing from you folks. We all know that salesmen use terms that technically mean one thing, but the general meaning is something else. And so we sign the papers based on the general meaning and then find out they were using the technical meaning and they stunned us or yeah, they cheated us. And again, we've all known of people where repairmen come in and they charge you for work they didn't do or they charge you for work that wasn't necessary. Now before I met Brother Green, who most of you know, we, we called one of those big, big companies in, in fact, they, they want to help you so much that they actually called themselves help. And they came to our house, this is before I met Brother Green, and our air conditioning wasn't cooling as well as it should have. So he goes out and checks it and calls me out, oh, sir, sir, this little relay switch is showing signs of wear. I'm, I'm, I'm retarded. I don't know what a relay switch is. I know absolutely zero about air conditionings. I said, well, you know, what will it cost? What, what do I need to do? He said, oh, you, you need to replace this right now. I'm not sure that, that it'll even last you another week the way it is. Well, after I got with Brother Green, Brother Green checked it, and it's like that relay switch, every relay switch works shows signs of wear after a few years. That relay switch would have probably lasted you another five or six years at least. Salesman basically lied to me. They've done that to other places. You know, and, and you ladies, and this is not nothing against ladies, when you walk into a garage and say, my car is making a funny noise, they think, ooh, lady, dumb, doesn't know anything. And all of a sudden, they start telling, well, you need to do this, 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 and this. 
because all they're doing is being dishonest. We all know of doctors in hospitals who charge for services they never rendered. But what about the employee? Now, I realize this, this varies from company to company to company. Some stores are very relaxed, and as long as they're not busy, they don't mind if you sit there and daydream or, or look out the window or something. But what about people who take a, I, I'm going to go get a drink of water, and they spend five or ten minutes talking to somebody from another department, and, you know, you spend five minutes, you're paid for eight hours. Well, it's, it, five minutes is nothing. That's five minutes you stole from your boss. Well, what about another case? You stretch a 30-minute lunch into 35 minutes or 40 minutes. Now, when you're on, you know, when you work for your husband, you can do that and get by. No issues there. But, you know, and, and th this happens all the time. You get a 30-minute lunch, but somehow you manage to dilly-dally and, and goof off, and by the time you get back, it's been 35 minutes. You just stole five minutes from your boss that you were paid to work. Or you take a quick trip to the restroom, and it turns into a 10-minute smoke break. I know that one because my dad was in charge of the uh, food service when he worked at the Army, uh, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, worked at the Army Hospital. He was a supervisor and, you know, ladies would say, I got to go to the restroom. Okay, go, go. Fifteen minutes later, they'd come back and smoke all over them. They reek, reeked of smoke. You know what they did? They stole ever how many minutes it was that my dad needed them on the, on the line, he needed them on the food line, he needed them processing trays, and they're off stealing money because it's the government. The government can afford it. Or you intentionally take something, maybe it's just a pencil, but is it any less stealing if it's a pencil? or if it's a $5, $50 plaque. Hey, this company's a multi-million dollar company. They're not going to miss a pencil. Probably not. I'm not judging if they are honest. I'm judging can you be trusted. If you'll steal a pencil, what will you steal next time? That's why you're being picky. Well, yeah, and I'm going to come back to some of this later. You buy something, you use it for what you needed it for, and then you take it back and say, this isn't working, to get a refund. And when we were in Texas, and, and I, I used this because I was good friends with the manager over the uh, lawn lawn, outside yard equipment, and, and I was in there one day, and, and we were talking, and, and of course, we got to know each other. And he said, you would not believe how many people come in in March or April, buy a lawnmower, use it all summer, bring it back in October, and say, this lawnmower isn't working, and get a full refund after they used it for three months. I said, you're right. I wouldn't believe it. He said, it happens every year. Well, you know what they just did? They basically stole a lawnmower for three months. Now, if you're just going to use it for three months, go to Arch Rental, go to, you know, the other rental places, but don't go back and say, I've used it for three months, it's not working, I want a full refund. Well, you deliberately leave cash off of your income tax. Oops, sorry. I'm not supposed to mention that because the government's crooked and the government wastes money and I don't want to give any more money to the government than I have to. So if I get cash for doing something, I'm just not going to report it. Because the government doesn't need it. 
government's going to waste it, the government's got trillions of dollars, I'm just not going to bother to put it on my return. Now, I'll, I'll let you in on a, on a little secret. We report every penny that we get. I do a, a, a funeral, I don't care if it's a dollar or a hundred dollars or whatever, if I get money, it's cash under the table, I keep a record of it at the end of the year, it goes on our tax return as other income. But you would not be, well, you would be surprised how many people that I know, many, some of them preachers, who say, well, it was cash, I don't have to count it. Well, I don't care if it's five bucks and you steal from the government. Granted, I detest how the government spends my money, most of it. I detest how the government wastes money. I detest a lot of the things the government does, but it's still the law of the land that you pay taxes on what you get. And you know what? I'm, for one thing, I'm too scared of going to jail not to. I really just, I've been in a lot of jails preaching and I've never seen a jail yet that I want to stay in overnight or for a week or two. Now, if you and I were really honest, I bet almost every one of us take more than is rightfully ours thinking that somehow we deserve it or nobody will notice. Now, I talked about companies, employees, what about just ordinary people? I don't lie. I may stretch the truth occasionally, but I'll never lie. Hmm, how important is truth? Can you be trusted with a secret? You'd be surprised how many people are like the little girl I read of. Read, the, read about this little girl who said a secret is something you tell to only one person at a time. And you know, a lot of people have that opinion. Well, I only told so-and-so, then you broke a secret. I remember when I was up in Ohio, just moved up there, and, and a preacher who pastored a small church out in the county just outside of town came over, introduced himself, took me, picked me up one day, took me all around Dayton, all around the area, showed me all the hospitals, where all the hospitals were, where to park, you know, all of the things. And, and while we were out, he said, can I tell you something? I said, sure. He said, I, I mean, you can't tell nobody this. I said, okay. So he told me something. Three or four or five months later, he was over at the house and he was talking about this particular situation. My wife was sitting there and he's talking about it. And she says, what are you talking about? And he was shocked that I had not told my wife. But he said, don't tell nobody. I didn't tell my wife. From that day forward, he knew that he could tell me anything and it would never go any farther. I counted that as, as a compliment to know. He said, you know what? I've told other preachers things and before I can get back home, it's all over town. Can you be trusted with the secret? Some of this stuff is petty, but usually if we're going to steal and cheat and lie, it's on petty stuff. Do you ever go to a restaurant where they got one of those automatic refill yourself dispensers? You know, free refills, you just go up and get your own refill. I have known people that just buy one drink, keep refilling it and share it with everybody in their family rather than buy three or four or five drinks. It's only Coke. I worked for Coca-Cola up to three and a half years, well, three, a little over three years. I know what Coke cost. It, that, that 32 ounce Coke probably cost less than a quarter maybe even less than that. They charge you 250. It's a rip off. But if I split it up, okay, I'm going to spend 250 and I'm going to share it with my wife and four kids and my six grandkids and my neighbors and my friends. What have I just done? 
I just stole from that. Well, their prices are too high. Then don't order it. Drink water. It's what my wife does. What do you want to drink? Water. I'm not paying two fifty for a Coke. But you see, we, we do things like that, and we don't even think about it. Now, if you order a steak and you say, I'm going to order a steak and I'm going to cut it in half, I'm going to give half to my husband, half to my wife, that's fine. You're not cheating the company. But it's like, it's free refills. It's re free refills for the person that bought the Coke. Not for everybody at your table. Some of these are picky, I understand. I've seen this happen. I've, I have gone out of my way a couple of times, and I'll explain. You eat your meal, and when they come around and say, how was your food? Oh, it was terrible. It was burnt. It was raw. It was whatever. Oh, excuse me. They go get the manager. We'll give you your meal free. Now, we've had cases where we've been out, and the food really was disgusting. But I'm not going to eat it and then ask for it free. I'm going to say, take it back, bring me another one. This one is unedible. We had an instance just a few weeks ago. Food was not good. The lady came and said, how was your food? It was cold before we ever got it. Oh, well, let me, let me get, no, 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 no. I ate it. I ate it, therefore I owe it. I said, you're, you're crazy. Well... I am, but you'd be surprised how many people do that deliberately to get a free meal out of a restaurant somewhere or something very similar. You send a complaint to the home office because the service at the service stunk. In most home offices, in order to make up for you know, in, in order to show our our our, our sorrow for you getting lousy service, we'll send you a free coupon for a free meal. Now, my wife and I, a couple weeks ago, we ate out. The service was lousy. I went home, went online, filled out a questionnaire, got a phone call a few days later. Let us send you a free coupon for a meal. I said, I don't want your free coupon. I'm not going to take your free coupon if you send it. I'm not going to use it. I didn't complain to get a free meal. I complained because the service was lousy. Do tell her what she needs to do. Work on the service. I ate the food. I don't want a free meal, but you would be shocked. How many people will do things like that to get a free meal out of a restaurant? When I used to work with the police department, I, 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 I would get in the cruiser after we had been on a call and I would sit there in absolute amazement, look over at the officer, and I say, I would have never thought of that in a hundred million years. I would have never thought of doing something like that. And, and I remember they would say, you really got a lot to learn. And I learned a lot in over 20 years that I was with them. There are gazillions of ways that people lie, cheat, and steal every day. Now, I expect that out of criminals. But sadly, many people who wear the name Christian are just as bad as people in the world. What does the Bible say? And I'm going to go through these very quickly. I've got about uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I'm going to go through these very quickly. Leviticus 19. Ye shall not steal, neither deal, deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Verse 13, thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. Well, that's Old Testament. Now, we'll get to the New Testament. Deuteronomy 25, thou shalt not have all in thy bag divers weights, a great and a small. Thou shalt not have in thine house divers measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have. 
Now let's see if I can get this straight. Last time I tried to tell this story, I got it all goofed up. I'm buying from you. You're selling, you're selling beans. I'm buying beans from you. And it's so much a bushel. So I go get my bushel, only my bushel is, is more than a bushel. So you think you're giving me a bushel, but it's bigger than a bushel. I just cheated you. Now when I turn around and sell those, I get another bushel that's much smaller. And I sell you the smaller bushel. I just defrauded you. And that's exactly what God is saying. You can't have a diver's weights in your bag. You can't have a great and a small. You can't have a, a big and a little. Thou shalt have a perfect and just weight. Psalms 37, the wicked borroweth and payeth not again. Now I'm not going to ask you because I think most of us do. How many, don't raise your hand, don't comment, don't, don't give any indication. How many of you have a credit card? Don't raise your hand. How many of you have a credit card? I knew a lady years ago, used to work with her. This was years ago. She and her husband got in a financial bind, and she actually made the statement. She said, there, there, there's, no way we can, we can, there's no way we can ever get out of debt, period. There's no way. So we're going to go out. This is almost a direct quote. We're going to go out. We're going to max out all of our credit cards by as much as we can. And then after we maxed them out, we're going to file bankruptcy. She claimed to be a Christian lady. My wife and I used to work with her. What did she do? There is no way on earth I can repay this. So I'm going to steal as much as I can while I'm stealing. Have you, ever, have you ever read that little thing, please sign here when you buy something? If you read the small print, I promise to repay according to the terms of my contract. Thou shalt not, not I'm sorry, wait a minute. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again. Proverbs, a false balance is abomination to the Lord. Proverbs 19. A false witness shall not be unpunished. Let's jump over to the New Testament, Ephesians 4. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. Skip down to verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. This is the will of God even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Now, this isn't my main point, but when you commit fornication, you are stealing from somebody else's spouse what is not yours to steal. Paul said, this is the will of God, even your sanctification, abstain from fornication. Then in verse 6, he skips down that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any manner. Do you get the idea that God places a high standard for honesty in every aspect of our life? Now, last point. And, wow, I'm ahead of schedule. How did that happen? Can you be trusted? Can you be trusted? Now I'm going to make this real simple. I've already covered a lot of specifics. Let's go at a different angle here. I've already asked you about stealing and, and lying and, and different things. So can you be trusted with the reputation of a Christian? I'm saved. By virtue of the fact that you claim to be saved, you have just assumed a position that carries with it a tremendous responsibility. I know everybody's Christian today from Pope, what is it, Pope John now? See, I don't know. From the Pope on down, everybody is a Christian, no matter what you are or do. But can you be trusted with the reputation of a Christian? 
sadly, and I say sadly, the world has come to not expect much more out of Christians than they do out of the vile, immoral, ungodly world. I had a, when the print shop was in our basement, we uh, had a service guy. We became good friends. He actually visited here several times. And, and he would come and he would always say, you know, when I see your name on the service call list, I look forward to coming. He said, you won't believe. I have been cussed out, chewed out, bawled out more by churches than I am in most factories and organizations. And I thought, what a reputation churches and Christians have. As Christians, we have the highest standard possible. Be ye holy as I am holy. Doesn't say be ye holy as the next person beside you. The standard is the Lord Jesus Christ. If you say you're a Christian, you're saying I am an imitator of Christ. So I ask you, can you be trusted with the reputation of a Christian? When a Christian is caught lying, cheating, being unfaithful, it often becomes big news in the community, if not around the world, depending on how high and well known the person is. When you were saved, you were given a reputation. Can you be trusted with that reputation? Secondly, can you be trusted with the reputation of our church? You know, everybody that joins, everybody that joins our church automatically is identified with our church. A chain is only as good as its weakest link. And we can have a whole church of outstanding members. But when it comes to the reputation of our church, one member can paint a black eye on our whole church and our whole reputation in this community. You know, there, there's many things I, I don't do for no other reason than it would hurt my reputation or it would hurt the reputation of this church. Well, what's wrong with this? Absolutely nothing except will it hurt the reputation of our church? Can you be trusted to guard the reputation of our church? Can you be trusted with the, to, to uplift and, and uphold and, and stand by the standards of our church? Can you be trusted? So you're part of an elite organization. I, I've got several people who, and I have. I, I took. My, I still slip up. I, I said they used. They, they were. They used to be a marine, and I learned once a marine, always a marine. Well, you know, and and they're proud of their reputation. Well, you know what? You have been entrusted with the reputation of our church. Can we trust you? Can we trust you to uphold and maintain the integrity at, of our church and what we stand for? Well, of course you can. Can we? What do you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? What do you do when I'm not around? What do you do when, when the trustees aren't around? What do you do when nobody's looking? Everything you do is a reflection of our church. Can you be trusted to defend and uphold the reputation of our church? How honest are you? 
If you're lost, you may put on the greatest show on earth. But you're living a lie. You may quote scripture. You may attend church. You may read your Bible. You may say your prayers, but everything you say and do is a lie. Because you've never repented of your sins, never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, and though you pretend to be oh so religious, if you were to die right now, you would be like the rich man in Luke 16, and in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Are you being honest with yourself? Oh, I, think I, I think I'm pretty good. You're not being honest. I think God will let me in. You're being ignorant. The only way you'll get into heaven is if you repent of your sins and put your total, complete, absolute faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save you. For all of us, how honest are you? Examine yourself. I'm not going to come around and make you fill out a questionnaire. I'm not going to show up at your work and hide in the closet so I can watch you. I'm not going to do that. God's going to judge you ultimately, not me. You're going to stand before God and give an account to God for every thought, every word, every deed. And I'm not going to stand there and say, how honest were you? Because God's going to have your record right there. He's going to know everything you've ever done. Father, we come. And Lord, as Christians, we have, we have told the world that we're supposed, that we're different. We've told the world that our sins have been forgiven. We've told the world that we have been made a new creature in Christ and old things have passed away. But have they really? Do we still act like the world when we get a chance? Do we still act like the world when nobody's looking? Do we still act like the world when it's more expedient? Father, first of all, I ask, are we honest about our salvation? Many, many people are going to stand at the last day and say, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils and in thy name done many marvelous works? But Lord, you're going to put the honest test to them. And you're going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. For those who profess to be saved, may they even now examine themselves and see if they are or if they've been living a lie. For those that are lost, help them, Lord, to realize that Satan will tell them they've got plenty of time, but that's a lie. May tonight you save them by your marvelous grace. In Jesus' name, amen. are you with yourself you know sometimes we lie to ourselves more than we lie to anybody else
How honest are you? Go home and think about it. When you go to work tomorrow, unless you work for your husband, am I really doing the job that I was hired to do? Or am I cheating every time I get a chance? You know, I worked in a factory when I was between churches. And I tell you what, you didn't get a chance to go leave. I mean, you know, they're coming at you, they're coming at you. you I gotta go to the bathroom, sorry. Uh, you know, you, we can't let you off of this line. You gotta stay. But I've also worked in offices where nobody's watching. Got my own little office. Nobody knows if I'm working or playing solitaire. That's when your honesty is really put to stake. We are glad to have visitors with us tonight. This young lady here just moved here from Lexington. Very nice to have you with us tonight. And then the young couple back here, uh, he's here on work. His family came up to join him. Compared to me, brother, you're young. Anybody under 80 is young in my book. Um, you know, uh, they're, they're, uh, he's here working. She drove up to be with him uh, from Mississippi, Missouri. I got the M right. Um, glad to have them, I believe. That's all the visitors, well, Spencer and Rachel aren't visitors. Um, believe that's it. It's good to have everybody here. Let's be dismissed in, in a word of prayer. As we do, Brother Frisbee, would you close, please?